Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel and podcast. Welcome back to another match preview. Uh, we are focusing this week on the away game against Brighton. I'm Scott. I am your host for this one. And this week, I am joined by Daryl and Andy. Daryl, mate, uh, you got another Saturday or Sunday yet? Uh, yeah, but not for the reasons of the football game, that's for sure. Um, I ended up having far too much to drink in York and made an absolute state of myself. So I'm, I'm definitely over that. Now, I, I did I did something to get over that yesterday by taking myself off to London and, and cycling around Premier League grounds in London um, to try and make myself feel a bit better. And here I am today, bright and breezy and going in this evening sunshine. Uh, Andy, are you still uh, forming after, after that result over the weekend? Uh, well, no, because likewise, I had a distraction. I was at Leeds Festival on Sunday. So I had seen the connection. I got one tweet through that said we were winning 1 0 on 50 minutes. And then I just received millions of messages from different WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups saying, WTF, what's happened? We're terrible. This is what's going on? Uh, and I just thought, you know, I can't be bothered. I'm just going to go and watch the killers in there. <laughs> and again, to be honest. Um, nice. Yeah. Probably, probably the, probably the, why is that weekend spent, <laughs> yeah. uh, to be honest? Um, but we'll move on, obviously, from that Liverpool game and we'll focus on the Brighton game at the weekend. Uh, but before we do that, here's a little word from our sponsor. The Gallagher Shots Match Preview is brought to you by Magpin. Magpin are the go-to site for high-quality, unofficial enamel pin badges of Newcastle United players, legends and retro kits. For more information, visit their website at magpinbadges.bigcartel.com. Okay then, so Saturday 2nd of September, 5.30 kickoff live on Sky at the Amex Stadium. It's still uh, sponsored by American Express, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Brighton, uh, not a bad start of the season this season. Uh, obviously, they're, they're coming off a pretty bad defeat from West Ham, but before that, they beat Wolves and Luton. Uh, Daryl, the last time we played Brighton at the Amex uh, wasn't the uh, wasn't the best result for us, was it? No, um, it was the second game of last season, and as much as we'd had a very good start, like against Forest at the start of last season with a two 0 win, we went to Brighton and. It was probably the first, well, it would have been the first time that we would have seen that things, we weren't quite gelling as a, a new team with the new signings that we brought in over that summer. It was Fen Botman's uh, first start as well. Um, but, you know, as much as the game, it was torturous as well for the for everybody, not just the players on the pitch, but the lads and lasses in the stand as well, because from what I remember, it was uh, a bit hot down there on the south coast at, the, at that point last year. Um, and there was... A couple of water breaks in either half as well, um, but again, it was it was a nil nil draw, and you know both teams did have chances. We had to clear one of theirs off the line, Kieran Trippier, with a last gas clearance, and then Callum Wilson sort of had the ball in the back of the net, but it got pulled down and 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 penalised for a high foot, which um, I think when we see it back or when we saw it back at the time, it was like, well, why is he giving that as a high foot now? Yeah, whatever, we're over it. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so it was a it was a nil nil draw down there last time. I think our record down there hasn't been brilliant. I think the the freak goal by Moji Army is the only win we've got down there in recent memory, um, and it's going to be what interesting. You mean, you mean the world class? Sorry, from sorry. Yes, the, the best the best goal that was ever scored in the, the history best of football. Back heel you'll ever see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's our only win down there in, in recent memory. But you know, it it's when you look at Brighton's start to the season, you know they absolutely blitzed the first two games and they were very very impressive. Um, came unstuck against West Ham last week and as much as I thought we might approach the game in a similar manner to West Ham it's not really within our style sort of thing mm. um, I think it, it has all the hallmarks on paper to be quite an entertaining affair it could be quite end-to-end -end. Um, it's going to be high energy it will come on to they've got a few players to, that we need to be careful of and we've got a few players they need to be careful of um, yep. so it's all going to come to a head and I think it could be quite the entertaining game yeah, I mean, of course, Andy, we've played Brighton pre-season in the Summer Slam Survivor Series, whatever they called it. Um, in, it was, was it in Philly? It was in Philadelphia, right? The Brighton game. Um, and we came out of there, you know, the victor of the spoils. Uh, I believe it was, was it 2-0 or 3-0? I can't quite remember. 2-1, I think, wasn't um, it? 2-1. Um, obviously, I Anderson scored two goals. Yeah, I, I, I it was Anderson it scoring. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. It was, it's pre-season. We can't really look much into that, but 
we kind of did all right against Brighton when a lot of us were expecting us maybe to come a bit stuck for them at that preseason game. Yeah, it was a good return to form that because I think the, the Summer Slam Super Mega Series or whatever it was called, all the games were a bit strange. And I think um, obviously we saw us go 2 0 down to Villa straight away. And then I think we went down to Brighton. Um, and yep. pre season's one of those things where you just want to see the team gelling and to see different players and new things and, um, you know, everyone looking happy and positive on the ball. I think we saw that a lot. Um, Anderson, we mentioned the fact he scored, but. All the talk was obviously about Gordon and Barnes this year on the left-hand side. And then Anderson came to that game, scored two really good goals. And all of a sudden, we're going, God, we've got too much depth in attack now. Um, yeah. So it, it was good because I think, like with that Villa game, it was kind of a bit like, oh, have we, are we going to regress from last season or are we going to kick on? And seeing that fight, even in just a pre-season game, it's that winning mentality of, even though it's a stupid summer slam mega money in the bank game, you still want to win the game. Um, so, yeah, it was good to see and hopefully another good game coming up. Yeah, you absolutely do want to, you know, see the players gel, as you said there. And hopefully this game, you know, goes our way again and, and we become the victor of the spoils of, of this game. Um, Obviously, Brighton have been quite active in the transfer window. And we'll talk a little bit about players in. But I want to first, Daryl, talk a little bit about players out that Brighton have lost. Mm-hmm. Um, Three big ones, really, and, and you can't really put it any other way, but Caicedo, McAllister and Sanchez... You know, regular first team starters last season, no longer at the club. Is that going to, you know, I think obviously they're probably over McAllister by now because they've had time to play without him. But the other two are more recent transfers that they've lost, uh, especially Caicedo was only what, a couple of weeks ago when he went to Chelsea. Um, big holes to fill those three players. Yeah. And I think this is where you have to really stand back and applaud Brighton's recruitment policy and all this because yeah. they seem to deal with these losses incredibly well. Um, you would argue in the first two games of the season, they didn't even miss Caicedo at all. Um, he never played because of the, the rumours about his move to Chelsea mm-hmm. and or Liverpool at the time uh, and obviously turned out to be Chelsea in the end. Um, so they didn't really miss him as such. Um, I think it probably came more to the front against West Ham last weekend where they probably missed his presence in midfield. Um, and you know, Sanchez has been pretty rock solid feature for them for a few years now. Um, they did bring, you know, the the way Brighton do their recruitment is very much, you know, it's a lesson for us to learn from because this is exactly mm. the sort of model that we're now going to adopt going forward. Um, so they'll have done all their numbers, crunched all the numbers, and done everything they need to do statistically to to make sure they select the right players to replace. Um, I think they've already replaced um, Kaisi. They've already got somebody in to replace Caicedo who's ready to, to fit in and, and, and fall into that mould when the time comes yeah. and when he, he starts to play football again. Um, but, you know, I think they've just had a bit of a reality check last week playing West Ham. And we know the style of playing that game. Anybody who saw that game last week will have seen that West Ham approached it in a specific way. Um, whether or not that is something that we can adopt, I don't know. I, I personally, I don't think we will. Um, but it's going to be really interesting to see it. And, you know, there's still, what, two days left at the time of recording for them to make another move in the transfer market if they feel they need to, um, to see if anybody else can come in. But, you know, we shouldn't be overconfident about this because of the way, like I said, Brighton have done their business. And it's going to be, you know, their model is built on this sort of success. And you can guarantee that they'll pick the right players to replace the ones that go out. Yeah, well, I was going to say, Andy, like looking at the players that they've brought in, it's a mixture of, Young players who, yes, you would class them as up and coming, but they could easily fit in that first starting eleven, and also some players with a bit more of an experience, which will definitely slot in. Very similar to our transfer policy this season, where it's been bringing a couple of players who will fit right in, and then bring in some youngsters who we can use if needs be, but really they're for the future. Um, players they've brought in, obviously, Joe Pedro. I still can't believe he's only twenty-one. I feel like he's been playing for That's crazy. You know, Lord oh, yeah. of Seasons, he's only 21. Um, they've got Belieber, uh, who's a centre mid, Ego at centre back. Um, I'm not going to pronounce this Dutch goalkeeper, but I think it's Verbrachen. Um, mm. that's what you get for living over here for six years. You, the G's are not the G's are has not G's. Um, it's Dahoud, I think you were talking about Daryl. Uh, mm. from uh, where did he, he came from? Germany, didn't he? And then obviously, the big one, the well, not the big one, but the, the name that links us together is James Milner. Who, you know, an early signing, but ever reliable. 
he's also only 21, can you believe it? He's <laughs> still playing like he's 21, doesn't he? Um, he does. But yeah, they're very impressed by their recruitment. And obviously, this is hopefully what we've got to look forward to with Dan Ashworth in charge. This whole, you've always got a plan, C, D, E and F. Um, and yeah, the, the players you've lost, they're players that three or four years ago, unless you played football manager, you didn't know who they were either. But the unearth these stars, um, polish them and turn them into, super, well, take these sort of diamonds in the rough and turn them into superstars. So, yeah, McAllister go in. It's obviously a massive loss for them. World Cup winner then leaves. Kai Sado, who, to be honest, I, 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 well, you can't say he's not a £120 million player or whatever it was because that's what he sold for. But he's kind of just this premium defensive midfielder that everyone's after now. And Sanchez, less of an impact because I think he cried off when Jason Steele was getting played all the time anyway. So he probably needed mm-hmm. to be out the door. But yeah, they sign all these players who they never really make the sort of the, the front page on Sky Sports News. No one's really that interested when they buy people. And then two or three years' time, we'll be saying they're broken, or however you say it. They'll, we'll suddenly be saying he's a £100 million goalkeeper because they just seem to find these players and coach them and get them in the right setup. And I think it's something that we can, like I say, look forward to when we sign these young players who aren't getting all the whole, you know, the, the same plot. It's that Tenali are not the same media coverage. And then in for three or four years time these people might be the next superstars of the future so um yeah brighton really well run club yeah and also Andy, staying with you they've obviously still got players that can damage you you know i mean i'm off the top of my head i'm thinking of mitoma as you know an fpl dream and a player that is gonna really cause people damage but there's others as well yeah there is you mentioned mitoma their whole left hand side is just absolutely lethal um, mm. Matoma, who, again, one of these players who you kind of go, oh, he looks like a quite a cool, interesting player, and he turned out to be the best player in the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> this sort of, this the whole thing where he wrote a thesis on how to dribble a football for his university degree, and just ridiculous, well, it's the only the sort of thing that the Japanese could do, really, isn't it? Yeah. But it's just unbelievable when you watch him. But then behind him, you've got Esther Pini on at left-back, who yeah, basically right. isn't a left back. They both play on the left left of the forward line effectively. And the way they interchange and all run beyond each other, it's great. But obviously everyone knows about how much of a threat they are. I picked out another player who I don't think gets as much applaud as he maybe should, which is Solly March. Whenever yeah. he plays on the right hand side for Brighton and cutting in on his left foot, he always looks dangerous and he's one of these players who you see him on the opposition team sheet and you don't really think anything of it. But he's already got three goals this season. He went on an amazing run last season where he was scoring every week. Um, and if he starts, it's, it's another one of those players where obviously we conceded two late goals, not to bring it up again, from that side of the pitch against Liverpool. And it's that area of the pitch again where we need to be careful for runners coming into the box. So, yeah, danger all over the pitch. But it, I think for me, it's more the system and how deserve he plays, which you've got to look forward, uh, look out for, because obviously he's very revolutionary. It's very um, proactive and on the front foot mm-hmm. and it can cause any team problems. But like we saw against West Ham at the weekend, doesn't always work, so we just got to make sure we're on our game. Yeah, it, it was almost like West Ham were just inviting that, wasn't it? They were just absorbing a lot of pressure and then hitting them on the counter attack. And you know, it seemed to be for two of their goals at least, it was just a, a, the right ball to unlock the the defense, and and you know they, they were through. Um, you know, I think the Antonio goal was probably the only exception to that, where he maybe he's bull- uh, sorry the the first goal where Antonio bullied. Mm. The defender off the ball a little bit and, and you know was able to get the assist. Um, we'll move on to uh, injuries for Brighton. Obviously, uh, they have Moda, who I think has been a quite a long term injury. Uh, but Daryl, one that we discussed just before we come on camera is Enciso, who looked pretty lively in the summer slam against us. Um, I think he had, mm-hmm. you know, he had he had words with Almiron, his fellow Paraguayan. Um, and also though the first game of the season, I think uh, was it against Wolves, he got a couple of assists. Uh, mm-hmm. Before and I don't know if he went off injured or his injury came after that game, but uh, he seemed to be a, a one that they were looking forward to. And again, it's looking like a, a nasty knee injury that he's getting. Yeah, I mean, he really did um, come in on the wave of the, his form from the end of last season and, and from pre season as well. I mean, he scored that cracking goal against Man City at the back end of last season. Um, and that you know, he did have just, like, didn't rotate, yeah, it sort of like it did a weave, didn't it? Yeah, um, and you know, he, he did have a good pre-season tournament in the SummerSlam, WrestleMania, whatever, in America. And uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, like you say, he got the two assists against Wolves. I think, I, I think the injury actually did come in that game, if I'm remembering rightly. Um, and again, he's going to be a huge miss to them. But you know, like we said, 
the players that they have as a backup in because of their whole statistics driven model, they'll be able to rely on them to come in and just do the same sort of job. Um so it'll be interesting to see how how they approach it. I mean they've used Solly March pretty much as we've just said, you know, Solly March has come in sort of on that side as his replacement and he's he's doing his job and, and bagging goals and assists himself. Um so it, it you know, they do lose these players and they do have this knack of having the correct replacement to come straight in. But then again, because they've now onto the like the backup plan, if anything was to happen to Solly March or etc does the backup to Solly March have the same effect? So it'll be interesting to see what happens. They'll be relying on having those players who are now starting games to be fit for the whole duration because they're in like any Premier League squad, once you get an injury or two, then you start to feel the pinch. Yeah, you certainly do. And and, and that brings us on quite nicely to Newcastle, obviously. Um, we saw Sven Botman go off uh, in the Liverpool game and, I don't think we've had much of an update other than he's probably going to miss this game and the Brentford game. I think it was reported today by, uh, I think Luke Edwards put something on Twitter that Eddie Howe was, I don't think he was talking to to anyone specifically, but I think that was the word out of the camp. So obviously, you know, that's one of our injuries that, you know, we could, we're now starting to look at the back form and thinking, you know, what do we do? And and it really brings it up to, you know, kind of, do you play Lascelles? Do you play Byrne? To, in that spot, um, or do you, you know, do you do you mix it up a little bit and go with the back three? It's it, it's a tough one to to decide. Um, obviously, with Lascelles, Andy, he's been in the news for other reasons this week. Um, do you think that rules him out at all of this weekend's lineup, or or even in the squad? Do you think he'd be given like some time off to just kind of to think about his actions? Yeah, I don't think he'll necessarily be left out as a disciplinary because of the clubs, no. obviously made it clear that they back him and if they are going to back him they can't then turn around and drop him from the team I think it would be more compassionate leave rather than disciplinary it would be more you know you've been through a bit of a rough week do you want to just take some time off with the family but I suspect if I was in that position my situation would be well I don't want to draw attention to it even more I'd rather just play and he is the club captain and he's you know he's he's stuck with us and he's never really let us down on the leadership front Um, so yeah he can slot in there going back to the centre back thing yeah Botman we can just pray and be happy that it's just two games because he is the linchpin of that defence. Mm-hmm. Arguably just as important as Trippier because he's in the centre of the pitch. Left-sided, yeah. gives such good balance in that team. And although he did mess up a little bit for that Liverpool goal, he's obviously been pretty much flawless since he's got here. But that's why you've got a squad. Um, Dan Burns, a left-footed centre-back, he can play there. I know he's always got that question mark around him, but it makes sense just from a squad planner point of view that he is the obvious replacement. He's left-footed, he's got loads yeah. of experience with the rest of the team. He should go in there. And um, just to throw something controversial out there, he did like playing Dummett as a left centre back in preseason. End of sentence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't upset anybody. Good with thing that one. Chris yeah. isn't on this. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be kicked uh, off the show. No. <laughs> that did happen. <laughs> obviously, one thing with Burn Darrell, um, obviously an ex Brighton player, knows the Brighton player. Oh, you know, some of the Brighton players, obviously not the, any of the new ones since he's left, but knows the majority of that squad pretty well. Um, would probably relish being back, you know, playing in his original position, as he will, uh, mm-hmm. there. But if the, the the big question is with if he plays Burn at centre back, do you then use Target or do you bring in the new guy Hall at left back? Because I think Hall's ready fitness wise. It's just kind of more learning the way that we play. Um, yeah. I think it was was what batted around. Um, and obviously, I think a lot of people would like to maybe see Hall start uh, just because he's a new signing, right? Because yeah. Like I think Decker said it on Monday night, like new signings come in and everyone's like, You've, you, they've got to start. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter who they're coming at, they've got to start. So, you know, w- would you like to see Hall or do you think it would be better to play it safe with Target, who knows the system a bit better? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is a headache. I mean, it's one of these Eddie Howe headaches that we're glad we don't have to have. Um, I mean, you know, if you want somebody who knows our system and how to play as part of our back four, then experience tells you you have to go with Matty Target. However, one thing that I'm sure we'll be able to come on to is the threat that Brighton pulls with pace. And yeah. our back four isn't necessarily blessed with pace. Um, Botman and Shea work very well together. Don't get me wrong. They're, they've been a brick wall for a long period of time. But when you have to replace Botman with Dan Byrne, as we saw last week, pace is going to destroy them. Um, you know, Darwin Nunez just 
tore shreds off Dan Byrne for the second goal. Um, I think he, I think Dan Byrne gave him a two or three yard head start, and he still managed two or three yards ahead of him before he took the shot first time to to score the winner. Um, so the pace element of Brighton's attack would worry is the one that worries me more than anything else. Um, and for me, if that was the case, then I would, would be tempted to bring in Lewis Hall, depending on how he's done in training mm. this week. Yeah, he's had a full week training with the lads now. Um, yeah. I think Hall probably has that natural pace to be able to deal with the fast-paced Brighton attack. Yeah, I mean, obviously the other option as well. You've got you've got Trippier who could move over there. I know we've said this, but it probably wouldn't happen. And you know, you've got Livermore who's had a bit longer with the squad, yeah. who could fill in at the left back role. Uh, sorry, at the right back role. Um, so we do have options. You know, it's it's not as paper thin as maybe it's being made out to be. I think it's just more the worry of it's not going to be a like for like replacement with Botman. I think you you're losing your best defender, um, arguably. Yeah. Um, well, maybe Kieran Trippier would be, you know, the only exception to that. But you're losing your best centre back, certainly. Um, and the replacements maybe aren't as up to scratch uh, as as you know you'd like. But that's why you have the squads. That's why you know everything goes wrong. We'll see what happens there. Um, Andy, I want to move to the other side of the pitch now because obviously we, you know, we saw what happened at the weekend. Anthony Gordon got his goal. Uh, was tearing up Liverpool. He did seem to come off. I don't know if he pulled up or if he was just absolutely exhausted, um, you know, when, when he came off against Liverpool. Um, but really, it, it's more about this, the striker that I want to bring up. And, you know, we've saw um, Isak twice now, granted against Liverpool and against Man City, not really be involved much in either game, apart from the penalty, uh, sorry, the, the red card uh, that obviously went because he was through on goal at uh, the weekend. Is there an argument that maybe he's Wilson? is deservedly of a, of a start this week because when he's come on, he's looked the more dangerous of the two. Yeah, well, my fantasy team would say no because I've got Isak. <laughs> but um, I, there's definitely an argument to be made. Um, we obviously were told before the season and Wilson said this himself that it's very much a 50-50 fight for who gets that first spot. Isak's yeah. got more divine right to be there even though he clearly is the better player and has the potential to be an absolute world beater. But it gets to a point where you know, the reason we lost that Liverpool game, other than the five-minute meltdown, was that we didn't take our chances. And if you've got a striker there who was in blistering form at the end of last season, and he doesn't get in the game after in the team after a game like that, you'd be saying to Eddie Howe, "Well, what the hell do I need to do? Because we need goals, and I'm your striker. I'm your number nine. So, and yep. um, there's definitely an argument to put him in there. I think we saw the the peeved off Callum Wilson at the end of last season when he was coming in, and you could see he just wanted to like kick lumps out of everyone and just score every time he touched the ball. And I think we might see that side of Wilson if we play him this time. And mm-hmm. he is going to get better service this year. We've already seen Gordon do a lot. Barnes has set him up in pre-season. So, yeah, for me, Isak is the better player, but I, I wouldn't blame Howard all if he changed it up and put Wilson in there. Yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting one. Daryl, obviously, the other the other big question is with the wingers. Um, you know, I think Anthony Gordon, had has it just been him be, you know, tired and, and not actually, you know, pull anything or be... You know, injured, and, and we don't know because we we do this before the uh, the the press conference. Um, you'd expect Gordon to keep his place because he did so well against Liverpool. He did well against Man City, and he's he did what well, he, he's played well pretty much all season. Um, and also obviously in the Euros uh, during the summer. Um, but on the other side, obviously, Miggy he, he took his, he didn't take his chances. Um, which you know, had he took those, it would have been a completely different story. Um, I still think Miggy played relatively well at the weekend um, he was involved in a lot of things and, and he did okay but you know not taking the chances when it's what we needed to put that game to bed you know is that something that Eddie Howe was when we look at and be like okay I'm going to give Jacob Murphy the start this week it, it might be more suited for Jacob Murphy or you know somebody else to play maybe he'll move Gordon over and, and play Gordon and Barnes. Um what would you do Daryl what how would you approach this well for me I actually wouldn't change that I would, I would keep Miggy in there. And I thought, you know, he did miss a few chances against Liverpool, but he had those chances. That's the important thing. And I think we can all agree that if it wasn't for the fact that it was Alisson in goal for Liverpool, he definitely would have put that volley away. Um, it was a superb piece of goalkeeping to stop that volley because it was going at some some speed when he hit mm-hmm. it. Um, and again, it's just down to a matter of inches for the the one where he hit the post as well in the, in the second half. I mean, that would have sealed the game there and then because... We, we can all agree that if we'd have got that second goal, then there probably wasn't going to be a chance of Liverpool getting back into the game because it would have killed their momentum. Um, for me, as an overall um, 
11, I think there's only going to probably, I think you'll probably only change two and it'll be one forced change. And I think I would agree that he'll probably start Callum Wilson ahead of Alex Izak as well. The forced change obviously being if Botman doesn't make it because of his injury. I think the midfield three will probably stay the same. Um, yeah. Another week on the training ground where the lads can just gel together and really start to understand their roles. I think there's been a lot of confliction between Bruno and Sandro Tonali about movement and, and who picks up who and, and, and who goes where. Um, I think it's probably put Bruno off the boil a little bit. With, you know, he's been, he has come under some, in some corners, which is unjust. There has been some criticism of Bruno this season. Um, not from me personally, but um, I think they just need that time to just get to know each other's games and how to move around the pitch because we can all agree that that midfield three is a dynamic unit. Um, they can all interject and all switch around in, in, in the midfield three and you, for a period of time in a game, you could end up with Joe Linton sitting out with the three of them or Sandro or Bruno. All three can fill that role and all three can then fill in the attacking roles as well. Um so yeah, I mean, in terms of the changes, it would it would be the two for me, and obviously the one forced and the one up front. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens at the weekend. Obviously, we'll know a lot more after Eddie, Eddie Howe's press conference on. It'll be on Friday, won't it? Yeah, on Friday. Um, we'll move on to our predictions, but before we do that, we always, uh, well, we also have a members' prediction. Uh, this week it is Anthony with his prediction. So here it. Is. Hey everyone, it's Anthony here from New Jersey uh, giving you my prediction for the Newcastle Brighton game. Uh, we're away, so I know it'll be a little bit difficult, but I think that might play into our hands. Uh, so I was at the Summer Series game where we beat Brighton, uh, and I'm going to go with the same result that we had there 2 uh, 1 us, uh, and I think we'll score both of our goals in the second half. I think. Uh, we will have less possession uh, in the first half and then kind of blow them away with our pace, just like we did in that Summer Series game. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye. There you are, then. A 2-1 victory from Anthony over in New Jersey. An international member prediction this week. Although we had one last week with uh, with Graham from Scotland as well. Uh, I'm classing that as, <laughs> as international because they, they want their independence. They should get it. Um Daryl, we'll come to you first, mate, for our predictions. Um, what are you going for? As much as I really do want to agree with uh, Andy from... Is it Andy Anthony. from New Jersey? Anthony. Sorry, Anthony. As much as I want to agree with Anthony from New Jersey, um, I would probably go with a draw. Um, I'm not going to say a goalless draw. I'm going to say a score draw, and I'm going to go with a 1-1. You're leaving it at that? You're not going to go for goal scorers or anything? You're just leaving it at 1-1? Um, well, simply because you of fantasy... If you want. Fan, well, for fantasy league reasons, it would be Matoma who scores for Brighton, I would imagine. Um, for us, I fancy Anthony Gordon to get another one this week. After mm. last week. Andy, mate, what's your prediction? Uh, I agree with Anthony. I think it's interesting to use the term... Uh, blow them away because that's the phrase we saw Eddie Howe use for that Man United game when he was firing them up and I think it'll be similar where Howe will get them really fired up for this as a response so I think similar um, I think we'll ride out a bit of a storm first half but we'll bring it back and because he's called Anthony not Andy I'm going to go for Anthony Gordon as well <laughs> um, get one of them and then we'll say Wilson to get, to get the winner and salute the away end well, that'd be nice yeah I I expect a response and I expect Eddie Howe to get a response from these players. You know, I think, you know, obviously the back four will be key in terms of how they handle the pace of Brighton, especially on that left-hand side, but I think we'll be okay. Um, I think they'll take a lot from the West Ham game and, and maybe see how it's how to break down Brighton a little bit. I'm going to go for a 3-1 win. Um, I think, you know, the lads would have all been in shooting practice on, Sunday, uh, on Monday morning, um, no doubt about it. And I think... They'll make amends for for that Liverpool defeat, and I think that they'll want to put on a, a show for that away team. So yeah, I'm, uh, the away crowd. Uh, so I'm going to go three one. Um, I also think it will be Gordon. I think Gordon might get a brace, uh, and then Wilson, if he starts, will uh, get one as well. Well, it doesn't even matter if he starts; he scores off the bench. Does Callum Wilson? So Wilson yeah. will get a goal if he features on the pitch. Uh, we'll put it that way. And then why not have Matoma 
uh, score against Brighton with an Estupina assist because I've got him in my fantasy football. That'll do um, me. As does everyone. That'll, that'll be nice, yeah. <laughs> Um, what do you think the score will be at the weekend? Let us know in the comments below. What do you think the startup's going to be? What would you do to the back four? Let us know below. Um, boys, is there anything that anybody wants to add before we wrap this one up? No. That's good enough for me. Well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is the match preview before the Brighton game. And more importantly, before the Champions League draw, which is tomorrow night, or it'll be tonight if you're watching this, because I'll get this uh, this this up in, in the morning. Um, we have a live stream coming up tomorrow evening. Uh, we will be live from 5 p.m. UK time uh, for the Champions League draw. Uh, we've got, I think there's eight of us going to be on the stream. It's going to be absolutely manic to, to, to manage, but I'm sure it'll be a good one. We're in pot four as well, so we're going to have to stick it right till the very end to see who we get. Um, but it should be a good one, and we would love you to join us. So keep an eye on your um, YouTube feed for, for when that goes up, uh, and then you can you can join us. I mean, if you want to be notified when that goes live, it's very, very easy. All you have to do is scroll down from this video, subscribe to the channel, and then once you're subscribed, hit the little notification bell, and then you'll be alerted when we go live easy as that uh, while you're down there as well if you've liked this video give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it give it a thumbs down we appreciate all forms of feedback um andy shaking his head yeah you're doing a matty this week you know you, you know it, <laughs> it all feeds the algorithm that that's all that we need um if you want to go one step further we do have a membership program it's 2.99 or three uh, 4.99 a month that gets you early access to videos like this that gets you access to the telegram group uh, as also the Discord server, and also gives you the opportunity to feature on a match preview in your members' prediction. This week it was Anthony from New Jersey. Thank you, Anthony, for your prediction. Let's hope that comes to fruition. Daryl, mate, thank you for your uh, expertise this week. Pleasure as Andy, always. Thank you for your insights as well. Expertise as well. I don't, I don't want to say expertise twice, but <laughs> there we go. Um, we will see you for that Champions League uh, draw tomorrow, and then there'll probably be a match reaction for Brighton, and hopefully it'll be a good one. We'll see what happens, but we'll go into this one. I said battered and bruised last week after the Man United game, I think after the Man City game. I think we're a bit more hurt after this Liverpool game, and I think we'll be riled up to get a result from this Brighton game. So... Fingers crossed we can come out with this, the, the victor, uh, and get the three points. But we will see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye.